Coming back to glucose metabolism, remember glucose enters every cell in your body and when glucose enters, it goes through this very important pathway called glycolysis and location of glycolysis in every cell in your body is the cytoplasm. And the end product of glycolysis is pyruvate. And that's where we finished up in the early part of this particular chapter. Once pyruvate is generated, it then goes into the mitochondria. And when it goes in the mitochondria of any cell that has a mitochondria, obviously not the erythrocyte, but when, when pyruvate enters the mitochondria, it sees a very, very important enzyme. And this enzyme, let me highlight it, it's called pyruvate dehydrogenase, abbreviated PDH. You must know it's located in the mitochondria, and it's an enzyme, in my opinion, for the National Board, a lot of tie-in with this particular enzyme, pyruvate, pyruvate dehydrogenase, PDH for short. Now, what is this enzyme going to do? Again, depending on where you went to medical school, they may have spent a whole hour, a whole lecture talking about how this enzyme works. But in my opinion, for the National Board, that is low yield, the mechanism of how this enzyme works. But what this enzyme is going to do, it's going to take the three carbon pyruvate and notice that surname dehydrogenase. When you see that surname of a dehydrogenase, that's telling you this is an enzyme it's going to carry out an oxidation reduction step. It's going to remove high energy electrons from carbon and put those on electrons onto something. So, so what this enzyme is going to do, PDH, it's going to take the high energy electrons from pyruvate, the three carbons of pyruvate, and puts them onto NAD to form NADH as, the pro, as one of the products. And what's the fate of NADH? Because this is in the mitochondria, NADH will, will go into the electron transport chain generating three ATPs in this all-important pathway that, that will be discussed in a later chapter called oxidative phosphorylation. So three ATPs coming from this mitochondrial generated NADH. This enzyme, in addition to oxidizing the three carbon pyruvate, will decarboxylate the pyruvate, generating one of the uh, carbons as CO2. Because one of the carbons is being removed is carbon dioxide, that what happens to other two carbons. Well, other two carbons of the pyruvate are then put onto coenzyme A, making acetyl-CoA as the product. So the acetyl-CoA product will then go into the Krebs cycle to be further burned, to getting a lot more ATP, or can be used for making fatty acids. Now, so why is this enzyme highlighted? Why do you need to know this enzyme from the National Board? PDH, pyruvate dehydrogenase. And the reason is there are several reasons for this enzyme to be known for the boards. One reason is this enzyme is highly regulated. And the most important regu regulation of this enzyme is the product of the enzyme. Acetyl-CoA will inhibit the enzyme. So if the acetyl-CoA is not going into the Krebs cycle, is not going on to make fatty acids, acetyl-CoA will shut down pyruvate dehydrogenase. This will be a very important issue once we get to the pathway of gluconeogenesis, that you know that acetyl-CoA inhibits this enzyme. Now, PDH is, is inhibited by other things, uh, uh, but these other items that inhibit this enzyme are, for the boards are not as important. What is important is that acetyl-CoA inhibits the enzyme. That's one reason why this enzyme is so important for the boards, its regulation. The second reason that this, that this enzyme is important for the, notion, no, for the National Board is what this enzyme needs to work to carry out this uh, complicated process. As I mentioned, the mechanism for the, uh, for the boards is not important, but what it, this enzyme needs to carry out this mechanism to, to make the products is important. Now, what does this enzyme need to work? They are listed right here. This enzyme needs five different coenzymes and cofactors to carry out this single step in metabolism. This enzyme needs thiamine pyrophosphate, which comes from the vitamin thiamine, lipoic acid, which does not come from a vitamin, your body just makes it, coenzyme A coming from panathenic acid, FAD coming from riboflavin, and NAD coming from niacin. So the so way the National Board might ask this is, they might ask, which of the following coenzymes does this enzyme need to work? Or the National Board might ask, which of the following vitamins is needed uh, to make coenzymes that this enzyme needs to work? Is there an easy way to remember these five different coenzymes this enzyme needs to work? And the answer is yes. All right, and there's a little mnemonic coming up. All you got to do is look at the first letters 
And the first letters are, uh, are T, L, C, F, N, and the, the mnemonic is Tender Loving Care for Nancy. So uh, if you know that, that mnemonic here, Tender Loving Care for Nancy, and the first letters of that mnemonic, it helps you deduce which coenzymes this enzyme needs to work. Let me just say, by the way, this is also the first of three Tender Loving Care for Nancy enzymes to know from the National Board. The other two enzymes, that, uh, that they will be discussed in the later chapters, but this is the first of three, and all three of them are major enzymes for the National Board. Tender Loving Care for Nancy. Another reason why this enzyme is important to know, to know for the National Boards is notice here that that one of the vitamins used to make a coenzyme that this enzyme needs to work is, is thymine. And, and you must know that thymine is deficient in alcoholics. And the reason for that is uh, alcohol inhibits thymine absorption in the, in the mucosa. And not only that, there's very little thymine in alcoholic beverages. So a long-term alcoholic is going to be prone to thymine deficiency. Now, the way the National Board might ask this is, they might give you a little vignette, something along this line. They might say to you, suppose a long-term alcoholic comes into your clinic. And as you know, a lot of long-term alcoholics are uh, emaciated, they haven't eaten very well, uh, they're thirsty and things along that line, they may be dehydrated and so on. And so you, what you might want to do when an alcoholic comes in your clinic, if you were to IV a solution of glucose into that patient because the patient is em emaciated, by IVing a solution of glucose, instead of helping that patient, you can kill that patient by IVing a solution of, of glucose. So, the way the, so what the National Board might ask is, by IVing that solution of glucose in that patient, you actually killed that patient. What did the patient die of? So what would be your answer? And the answer is, that patient would have died of lactic acidosis by IVing a solution of glucose into that patient. So the issue is, why did the patient die of lactic acidosis? And the reason is because, um, because this enzyme, PDH, is the first enzyme in metabolism that requires thymine. And because alcoholics are deficient in thymine, this enzyme will not work because this enzyme needs thymine pyrophosphate to carry out that single, that single step. So in alcoholics, without the thymine, this enzyme will not work. So if you IV a solution of glucose, it gets into, into all the cells, goes to glycolysis down to pyruvate, no problem in these patients. But then in the alcoholic, because PDH is defective, pyruvate cannot go on to form acetyl-CoA in the mitochondria because the enzyme is it can't work because of thymine deficiency. So what happens there in the mitochondria, pyruvate starts to accumulate, spills back out of the mitochondria, goes into the cytoplasm, and in the cytoplasm, it sees that very important enzyme, lactate dehydrogenase, which then converts pyruvate to lactic acid, and there it is. If you administer glucose, you accumulate pyruvate. Pyruvate then backs up in the cytoplasm, sees LDH, lactate dehydrogenase, which converts the pyruvate to lactic acid, which then is dead end, it spills in the blood, and then the blood, uh, when it spills in the blood, the pH of the blood will drop and a person can die of lactic acidosis. This is so important. This is how the National Board asks you about metabolic pathways instead of asking what follows fumarate in the Krebs cycle. They're not going to ask that. They're going to ask about metabolic pathways this way, a global way of looking at the pathways and knowing what happens if something goes wrong with an arrow in biochemistry.